Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalinati. Today I am going to review Outside the Gates by Molly Gloss. This is a dystopian fantasy novella that was published in 1986, and I believe it was Molly Gloss's debut work. It is described as a novel in multiple places, but the length of it is so short that I think most people would call it a novella today. The plot of this story is actually very simple. It follows a young boy named Vren. When he is about six years old, he is exiled from his community because he exhibits a magical talent. He is dumped outside the gates and is sitting amongst the bones of other people who have been exiled and died and crying. He is discovered by an older man who takes him in and raises him. About six years later, when Vren is approximately 12 years old, he comes home one day and his adopted adoptive father is missing. Vren knows his father would not have just left. Something very bad has happened, so he sets out to find and rescue his father, and he is joined by his wolf companion, Trim, and a very old woman named Shell. I'm going to start with what I think is the weak aspect of this story, the thing that I think modern audiences will immediately criticize it for, and that is it's a very, very sparse world building. We really don't get any explanation or history or backstory for why the world is the way it is. We're just kind of inferring that it is dystopian from glimpses in the story. We just kind of know that it's fantasy because characters have magical talents, and apparently that is a terrible thing. But we don't know much more beyond that. And I think on the one hand, this is a weakness I wanted more, but it's also illogical given how the story is being told. It's from the very narrow perspective of a young boy, and really all we know, all we get to understand about the story is what this young boy remembers and understands. And I think the overwhelming sense of the world that we have is that it is supposedly a bad thing to have a magical gift. People feel branded and marked by it. They don't want to talk to each other about it, even though it's the thing that all of them have in common. Even Vren and his father don't seem to ever really discuss or outright acknowledge that they have magical talents. Vren has just this very sweet connection to animals that he can kind of talk to and commune with. His father can manipulate the weather. And you can kind of see how these gifts could be used for bad intent, but for the most part they come across as very benign and benevolent. But that's until the story gets going and we know, along with Vren, that his father has been taken by somebody with a magical talent, a spellbinder who can basically mind control people. So I can understand why we don't get much explanation for what are the gates? What happened to this world? Did something bad happen with magic? What is really behind the gates? What kind of civilization is there? But for what this story is, I found it incredibly touching. This is just about a boy who wants his father back. And I really appreciated it for the fact that in the face of pain and exile, suffering, a struggle to survive, the characters in this book repeatedly exhibit care and compassion and love, not so much in their words, but in their actions. And this isn't a typical fantasy story about a young boy coming of age, becoming a great person with a great magical talent. Vren is not a hero. He's just a little boy. He's not a powerful mage. He can just talk to animals. He is weak. He gives up a couple of times, and yet he also chooses again and again to keep going because he loves his father. I read this at a time when I am very tired of reading about pain and hearing about suffering, and even though it is about those things, it also has a lot of hope in it, and I really needed that. 
If you're curious about whether this book is for you or not, I would describe it as having the dystopian overtones of Vonda McIntyre's fiction, though it is definitely fantasy rather than science fiction. And I would also describe it as having the quietness, the tranquility, the gentleness, and the inner journey of Ursula Le Guin's fantasy. I think it really fits well with those two authors' work in its theme and the way that it's written, the way that it feels. I will definitely be seeking out more of Molly Gloss's fiction in the future. I believe that Saga Press has reissued three or four of her previous works, so they are available now and I'll probably get my hands on them pretty soon. So overall, this was a really lovely novella. I enjoyed reading it immensely. I'm very glad I read it at this time. I would recommend it and I would love to hear from people who have read other things by Gloss. She's a completely new author to me. I had never heard of her before and I definitely want to read more by her now. Thank you so much for watching this review and I'll be back soon to talk to you again. And until then, bye.